Hello, welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can access uh, SFTP servers using PowerShell. Um, so let's get started. Um, PowerShell doesn't support SFTP out of the box. So in order to use PowerShell, you need to use an additional PowerShell module. So the module that we're going to use is Posh SSH. And the way to install it is by using this command that you have, uh, that you can see here on the website. Uh, however, um, the stable version of this module doesn't support Linux yet. So in order to get Linux support, you need to install 3.0, uh, version 3.0 of this library, uh, which unfortunately at the time I'm doing this video uh, is not yet a stable release. So in order to um, install the, uh, in order to use it, uh, when we run install module, we need to specify allow pre-release. So let's do that right now. Uh, let's start PowerShell and let's install the module. Okay. So now the module is installed. Uh, if it's installed correctly, we should be able to query the commands that are in that module. So we can use the command get command. So these are all the uh, methods and operations provided by the um, Posh SSH PowerShell module. So, so in this video, we're going to be concerned with the commandlets and the functions that uh, operate on the following nouns. So those nouns would be those nouns would be um, SFTP content, SFTP item, SFTP session, and SFTP location. Okay, so we're going to be using um, these functions and commandlets after this. Um, in order to uh, interact with our SFTP server. So let's look at our setup uh, first. On the right-hand side, I have uh, a Linux machine and I'm running PowerShell on this machine. So it's going to be serving as the SFTP client. On the left-hand side here, I have a Windows machine and this Windows machine uh, is running the OpenSSH SFTP server and it is exposing this directory uh, to SFTP clients, which is C drive incoming. Okay. The user that has access to this directory via SFTP would be user one. So later we'll see that when I make connections to the SFTP server, I specify the user, uh, user one. Okay. So let's now try to connect to the SFTP server. The function that we use in this case, or the commandlet is new SFTP session. So let's do session is equal to new SFTP session. And the IP address of our SFTP server is 192.168.50.20. And let's connect using the username and password credentials. So let's do credential. We're using username and passwords to authenticate to the SFTP server. Uh, so I need to provide a password here. So um, this is the password of user one on that SFTP server. Now, if I were to print out session, I should see that it's connected. So let's try to, just to verify that it's connected properly, let's try to list uh, the contents of the current directory. Or it's a little bit more, it's a little easier to read if you format it as a table. Okay, so you can see that this list here matches the list in Windows Explorer on the left-hand side. That uh, demonstrates how you can connect to the SFTP server using a username and password. But most of the time when we connect to an SFTP server, it's recommended that we use key-based authentication. So let's uh, now try to connect 
to the SFTP server using a, an SSH key pair. So I've already created an SSH, SSH key pair here. This one here, Alice and Alice.pub. Okay. And I've already uh, added the public key of Alice here to the authorized keys file of user one on the Windows server. So I should be able to connect to the SFTP server using Alice's private key. So let's try to do that using PowerShell. Okay, so I've given the key file, but I didn't give the name of the user to connect to the um, SFD server as. So in this case, I would specify user one. And because we're using key-based authentication, the password that it's asking for here is actually the password if your key is encrypted. So in my case, the key uh, Alice is not encrypted. Okay, so as you can see now, it's it's connected to the SFTP server and this time using, using the key-based authentication. So just now we entered the credentials in programmatically, but if we're going to do some scripting, maybe we would want to have the credentials specified uh, programmatically rather than interactively. So the way we can we do that is that we instead of having this uh, commandlet prompt us for the uh, credentials, we can specify the credentials as a variable. So let's have a look at that. Okay, so now that I've specified the credential as a variable, it will not prompt me to specify the credentials um, interactively. Okay, so now you can look at session and you can see that it's connected. Okay. Okay, so now that we've established the connection to the SFTP server, let us try to enter one of these subdirectories. So the subdirectory that we're going to attempt to enter is this files to process directory. So the way we do that is by doing, uh, by using the command uh, set SFTP location. Okay, so this directory uh, contains one file called people.csv. So now that I've changed the location uh, from the point of view of the SFTP client, I should be able to see uh, that file. Okay, so as you can see, I'm able to see that file. So if you want to query which directory that you're currently in, you can use get SFTP location for that. So now let's try to download this file people.csv. So the command to use to, to do that is called get SFTP item. So get SFTP item. So path is the name of the file that we want to download and destination Destination. Destination is the local directory that we want to save the downloaded file to. So in this case, I just want to save it to the current directory. Okay, so now if I look at the current directory, there is now a people.csv. So we use get SFTP item to download a file. To upload a file, we use the command set SFTP item. In my local directory here, I have a data.txt 
um, file and I want to upload this file to the files to process directory on the SFTP server. So let's do that by using the set SFTP item command. Path would be, we point to the uh, file that we want to upload, the local file that we want to upload, and destination would point to the directory on the server that we want uh, the file uploaded to. As you can see, the data.txt now appears uh, on the server. So you can also um, you can also download the contents of the file directly to a variable. So to do that, you use the command get SFTP content. Let's say that we want to download the contents of people.csv and we want to store it in a variable. We can do something like uh, people is equal to For the get SFTP content, you need to specify the full path because uh, I don't know why, but it doesn't uh, take into consideration the current directory. So you need to specify the full path. So now if I were to look at people, I would see the contents of uh, the people.csv file. All right. And if you want, you can also convert that to a, uh, to an, a, a nice looking table by doing uh, convert from CSV and you can convert that to a nice looking table, All right? Now you can also upload um, this way as well. So let's say that we have, um, let's say we have a variable and the contents, variable name contents, and let's say that inside there, we have the data Bob123. So let's say that we want to upload this um, to the server into this directory and we want to give it a file name bob.txt. So let's do set SFTP content. So just like we get SFTP content, we have to specify the full path uh, on the server here. Okay, so now as you can see, there's a bob.txt on the server. So let's say that we want to rename bob.txt to uh, a different file name. So the way we do that is using the command rename SFTP file. So let's rename this file to, to bob2.txt. Okay, so as you can see on the server, the file is now called bob2.txt. So let's say we want to delete bob2.txt, we can use the command remove sstp item. And now the file bob2.txt no longer exists on the server. And finally, once we're done accessing the SFTP server, we can close the connection by doing remove SFTP session session.